Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben you here for another legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com and our deck list slash challenge comes to us from an anonymous user. One thing that I want to say before this video starts for today is Phyrexia All Will Be One is now legal on Magic Online, so beginning today we will start seeing some of the new cards. If you're not a follower of my podcast, the Eternal Glory Podcast, consider checking that out as we talked about some of the cards in a recent episode that I haven't actually recorded yet, but like I'm going to record tonight, but by the time that you all see this, it'll be recorded and released. No, never mind, time is weird for me. So today we are going to be trying this whole reanimator transformational sideboard package again. And a few weeks back we tried it to some good results, and we were trying to transform, I believe, into a more fair creature-based beatdown plan. And today we are going to be trying out the Witherbloom Apprentice and Chain of Smog combo. Let's come back to that in a second and check out the main deck. The main deck here is largely going to look like traditional black-red reanimator, except that we have bayous here rather than some things like show and tell. Like show and tell. Can you tell I just got off of work? Uh, like underground sea or maybe a scrubland for serenity. And we're instead opting to play bayou so that we can cast these Witherbloom apprentices out of the sideboard. And one little sneaky profane tutor made its way into the main deck, although we do have three more in the sideboard. So generally speaking, our game one plan is to just reanimate something big and dumb, and we have three choices here. The Sarah's Emissary, which tends to beat creature decks. The Grizzlebrand, which, like, let's be real, it's Grizzlebrand. Putting one into play on turn one is very strong and usually results in a win. And then there's Archon of Cruelty, which is just a fantastic flexible option that gives you a little bit of extra life to work with while impacting both your opponent's board and hand. However, in the post-sideboard games, where we're expecting a whole bunch of graveyard hate, we're going to board into a different combo that does not use the graveyard. So the idea is that we have a Witherbloom Apprentice, preferably, although this is also going to work with Sedgemore Witch. Oh, hold on. Sedgemore Witch, you, you need some more room on the screen there, girl. All right, there we go. And both of these cards work the same way. With Magecraft, you get a trigger when you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell. Now, you can cast a Chain of Smog targeting yourself and repeatedly copying it, and that can either drain your opponent out or give you infinite creatures. Either one of those should lead to a win. And the idea is that we can use Profane Tutor to tutor up the piece that we don't naturally draw. I'm putting in one Wishclaw Talisman as an additional tutor card, but I don't think I want to overload on Wishclaw Talisman, as it's very reasonable that our opponent could use the Wishclaw Talisman to find their own answers to it. So basically, you just want to activate Wishclaw Talisman on the turn that you are going off. So for example, if I play a Wither Bloom Apprentice and pass the turn, on my next turn, I can like play out a Wishclaw Talisman, and then the following turn, activate it, find the Chain of Smog, and go for the win before my opponent has a chance to use the Wishclaw Talisman. Um, we'll kind of see how this goes. Generally speaking, in order to board in these 15 cards, and it will basically be a 15 for 15 swap, we'll be boarding out most of our creatures. We'll probably end up keeping the griefs. So we'll probably end up doing something that looks like this. We will probably keep in Tomb and Reanimate, as that's another way to get a Witherbloom Apprentice into play sometimes, but we'll probably be going down on most of the rest of the stuff, and all the Dark Rituals and stuff can just power up this nonsense instead. All right, so let's see if this is genius or jank. If you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing, and if you're regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. Okay, my first hand here just does not have any action in it. I'm going to just go ahead and ship that one. My second one is missing a little bit, but is probably going to be good enough to keep. I'll just be throwing back one of these swamps here. Okay. All right. So basically, what just happened here is I believe Arkin 
is probably just dropping from this event after going like 02 or something like that and it's just giving somebody a win on the way out that's my guess as to what just happened there alternatively maybe he is brewing something particularly spicy and doesn't want 10,000 plus people to see it because these are literally the first matches that are happening right after this set has become legal on Magic Online. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, which is more than just the deck building website that they advertise to be. It's a place where you can go to find articles and more than just deck lists. So for example, if you want to find out the people who are like brewing or a lot of the brewers with the most followers, that's something that's just readily accessible on this website. So consider checking them out. Okay, I have no mana here, so that one's an easy mulligan. Thoughts he's myself on turn one, pitching Sarah's Emissary. Turn two, play Animate Dead, name presumably creatures. One has mulligan to five. I am keeping this hand. I am throwing back one of these cards. I guess probably Grief over Unmask goes back because Unmask can target me and Grief cannot. I want to go into four. So my guess is going to be it's something like Oops All Spells. If I draw a black card, I can unmask my opponent. But I think I have to keep the second land. Doomsday. Probably. Faithless looting with Bayou Swamp in hand is awkward. It's also really awkward if we happen to be playing against Blue Black, Atraxa Reanimator. But I'm still going to Thought Seize myself. I just think it is correct here. They are brainstorming in response. I wonder if they realize that I targeted myself there. Alright. There is Emissary to the bin. And we'll see if my opponent is randomly playing Blue Black Reanimator. I get super punished for this. Alright, fetch land. This is not crazy that this is all, could also be like Cephalid Breakfast, but a mold of four for Cephalid Breakfast it would be pretty rare. Oh, there we go. Man, I wish I was reanimating that instead. But I don't have the option to do that right now. We are going to unmask my opponent, pitching the Archon of Cruelty, Force of Will, and Teferi Time Raveler. I will take the Teferi Time Raveler here. I will animate dead this creature. So I can protect against another Teferi. I can protect against things like Baleful Strix, or I can protect against like Swords to Plowshares. And this is a, there's not a right answer situation. I think I am going to name Creature so that I don't embarrassingly get walled by Baleful Strix. This also stops things like um, Cauldra from just threatening to clock me back. Now, Prismatic Ending is a card that does exist, and that's a potential reason to name Sorcery, though. My opponent's answers to this are spread out over a surprising number of creature types here. Let's crash in. Uh, somewhat awkwardly, this is not like the fastest clock in the world. The one point of power difference between 6 and 7 is an entire turn cycle here, assuming that my opponent does not fetch. Alright, nice. That's 6 more damage. And I'll go to 7. I'm going to Thought Seize my opponent here. Um, I might have to take the stupid Wizard Cycle card. Or my opponent can Wizard Cycle in response to put a Thassa's Oracle in their graveyard. Force Pitch Narc Amoeba. Yeah, it's a step through. That's a Cephalid Illusionist, and I have died. That's pretty frustrating, because I needed one more attack here. And my opponent just happened to draw the necessary blue card. So this combo has come up a decent amount on the channel. I'm going to walk you through it and then just pass forward to the end. Shuko is going to equip on Cephalid Illusionist an infinite number of times, milling my opponent out in process. That is going to get them to a Dread Return as well as a couple of Narc Amoebas along the way. So assuming that their remaining card isn't like a Narc Amoeba, uh, we should be good. They should just be going... Casting Dread Return on Thassa's Oracle, and I will die. Okay. So, everything is sort of on the board now. My opponent has Dread Return, 
fourth house's oracle. I am just deterministically dead here. And it occurs. Um, that was pretty unlucky. Step through is a two of in the deck list, and my opponent both needed step through and their draw to be a blue card. So do I want to go to the creature plan here? I'm not sure that I do. My opponent has these things like Baleful Strix, so I'm not going to like just get easy chip damage in with them. I don't I don't think I'm super excited about this plan here. I'm sort of interested in Chain of Smog as a fair discard spell. I think for game two I'm gonna try to stay on Reanimator and just power through. This is a highly disruptive hand that doesn't really do anything unfair on my own. I think I'm going to fish a little bit here. I don't love this hand. I don't hate this hand. I think I will keep it. Pitching an exhume here. Possible I'm supposed to mulligan deeper than this, but... Eh, fuck. My keep has not paid off here. I was very much hoping that they would have a different sort of disruption here, so now I need to find things like Grief and cast them. Uh, which is, frankly, just not happening. I think for viewer entertainment purposes, I should probably just concede here. I'm just not winning this game. Like, my opponent's deck is too resilient. They started with a ley line that I couldn't disrupt via discard. And I didn't want to board in the sideboard plan and show that to my opponent. And then, like, I've used my trick before game three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in the towel here. All right, we're playing against Tony, who is almost certainly on the Mono Black Saga Storm list that he's been working with. I believe I'm going to keep my hand. I am missing a piece. I need to find a reanimation spell, but I can go off on turn one a good portion of the time here. All right, so let's cast Faithless Looting and try to find a reanimation spell. Whiffed. I'm going to pitch Archon and one land here, I think. And then on turn two, I would like to cast Dark Ritual into Grief. I think that means it's okay to just Lotus Petal and Thought Seize my opponent to disrupt them. Oh, no, it is going to be the Epic Gamble this time around. Uh, so Gamble is the only card in this hand that does anything, so I will be taking that. On turn two, I will hard cast a Grief. I'll take whatever hasn't been played out, because a lot of those cards are just coming into play this turn. Yup. Opal. All right, cool. Another faceless, ugh, another faithless looting. If I cast this card, I can get two more looks at re a re reanimation effect to have a much swifter clock. But I miss on hard casting grief this turn most of the time if I do this. I think this is fine. Yeah, very nice. So I will now discard grief and thought seize. Go ahead and fetch. Find the other bad. I guess I can find a swamp. It doesn't matter here. Swamp, dark ritual, animate dead, target archon. So my opponent has to discard a card. They'll discard this defense grid that I know about. I found another land. And I'm in a pretty favored position at this point. Okay, sure, sure, sure. All right, uh, very nice. Oh, oh, I see. Just sending the spirit guide to exile. Reasonable. I've got some bonus mana. Opponent's at seven. Go ahead and do this. Do this. I am fine with putting another body in play, although I don't think it's something that should matter. All right. So their draw would have to be, I think, Echo of Eons. And it was not. I need to take a look at this deck list and see what they are playing for Graveyard Hate, because I legitimately don't know. So Tony's last deck list has Leyline of the Void. So I think it is time for Operation Chain of Smog. So let's go Grizzlebrands and Archons out. The Exhumes out. Blop. Blop. 
and then it's animate dead out, I believe. Let's sort that by mana value and just double check myself. This leaves in tomb, reanimate, thought seize, and a decent amount of reasonable cards. Yeah, switching to this plan feels much better for the post sideboard games after I've won game one. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a keep. I will go off on turn two most of the time with this hand. I get two draws for the other mana source that I need. Although my opponent has some very powerful turn one plays that can happen, so there's that. Oh, Mycosynth Gardens is coming around. This is something that can copy a Lion's Eye Diamond. So important rules note here. Lion's Eye Diamond does not require tapping to sacrifice it. That's super important here. All right, there is an Echo of Eons. My second hand is very noticeably worse than this first one. It does not go off on turn two and does not have a second mana source. I suspect we're probably just dead on turn one, though. I did find you some uh, promised... Pyrexia all will be one cards. The, if this ends up actually being anything other than a colorless mana source, though. All right, Burning Wish with a storm of 11 and black mana means that I am immediately dead. There is the Tendrils. I will happily concede to that and not make my opponent click those targets. Am I fine with Witherbloom Apprentice, Chain of Smog? I think so. This is going to be a keep. On turn two, I can Dark Ritual, have four mana, play Witherbloom and Wishclaw Talisman, and probably Goldfish on turn three. That changes if I have to also unmask my opponent, though. My opponent is going to four, presumably mulliganing to a Leyline when they are on the draw. And they're probably not going to like what I do. Going to three. Two. One. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and batch. Yep, probably buy you here. I will thought seize my opponent. A lot of the times it's just a land, but about half the time I expect it to be Lion's Eye Diamond as the single singular card that they keep. Yep, yep, yep. So now we'll go ahead and fetch. I can grab a Badlands with this one. I guess I don't need the red right now, although my opponent's not going to just like Blood Moon me or anything. So I guess I unmask this card, right? It's Profane Tutor. Take a Burning Wish. Play Dark Ritual. Play Wither Broom. Blah, 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 blah. Play cards. Play cards. Cards good. And my opponent's dead if I find a third mana source. Which I might not do immediately. But this game I did. Back for two. Opponent goes to 18. I'll fetch. I will grab a land, I will activate a Wishclaw Talisman, I will find a Chain of Smog, I will Chain of Smog, targeting myself, always yield to that, and hey, we win the match with the sideboard juke. Although, like, we're three rounds into this and I don't really feel like we've played a super real match yet. Okay, um, I'm probably going to keep my hand. This hand probably just griefs my opponent, reanimates my grief and then eventually plays a different game other than that while like when you think about reanimator you think about doing the big dumb thing all the times sometimes doing a highly disruptive and annoying thing is good enough to get a w i am going to start on the faithless looting though and see where this goes i'm okay if this gets countered and i'm very okay if it doesn't all right grizzlebrand to the yard Guard a Thoughtseize, probably. Guard a Thoughtseize, probably. Non-land. Non-land. So these cards are functionally the same. I'm going to do a Grief to put it in the graveyard. Grief. Pitching Unmask. What you got over there? Something. A Brainstorm? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay. It is a Mirror or Pseudo Mirror. I wonder if my opponent has a Traxa. They get that here. An Archon of Cruelty. Multiple Thought Seizes, another Archon of Cruelty. I will be taking your Exhum. Grief goes away. 
Now, do I want to take Grizzlebrand? I think the answer is still yes, despite the fact that, like, a top-decked spell is very good against that. I don't know. Maybe I just put this Archon into play and call that good. Reanimate Grizzlebrand later. Don't give my opponent the chance to get Archon, but, like, Grizzlebrand is Grizzlebrand. And there's a good chance that I could hit another Lotus Petal and keep going deeper. Ah, so awkward. I'm going to go for the Archon. I don't know if that's right. All right. And that will be an end of turn for me. Okay, sure. Yeah, Thoughtseize is fine. Oh, they top decked. Wow. They top decked another. Uh, well, that is what it is, I guess. I guess I could have griefed to help play around that. Um, that's very frustrating. I don't know. A very specific thing just happened there. Maybe I didn't misplay. All right. Let's see if I draw like an animate dead or something to get me out of this. Sure. Okay. Um, I think that beats my Archon, uh, if I were to get one. That's frustrating. All right. I will concede there. Um, that's a legitimately interesting situation, at least. Like, the Grizzlebrand and drawing seven loses to my opponent just producing an Archon off the top of their deck, which they would have done, unless it also puts a Grief into play. I think I'm interested in this stuff here. I can reanimate my opponent's stuff a lot of the time. This is just objectively slower, though. I don't know, I'm probably just losing the game on the draw anyway a good portion of the time. So if I board in these 15, I normally board out these 15, but Animate Dead as something to cast on my opponent's spell is... Totally reasonable as well. And I don't know if I'm supposed to keep that. I am not sure. What does this hand do? I can play Sedgemore Witch on turn one. That doesn't super matter. The Entomb's not great here. I can grief my opponent, pitching Entomb, see if I need to Thought Seize. If I don't need to Thought Seize, I just cast a Sedgemore Witch and then intend on spending this for a chain of smog for a win later. I can back it up with Thoughtseize on turn two. This is unexciting, but probably keepable. Just awkward. All right, so Grief pitching in Tomb. See how good my opponent's hand actually is here. Well, it would have been, oh man, multiple in Tombs. Annoying, and my opponent can animate dead my Grief. Probably just supposed to take the animate dead then and put my threat into play. That's awkward. All right, let's grab Bayou, ask the Dark Ritual, and play out a Sedgemore Witch. I'm going to lose this Profane Tutor to my opponent's Unmask in all likelihood. And this is a situation where I wish, like, if I was going for a fair plan, that this was just something like a Dalthy Voidwalker. I could have put, like, Douthy Voidwalker into play and then, like, Thought Seized my opponent as well. I don't know, maybe this isn't unfair enough for the mirror. But if I'm playing the mirror without my own Graveyard Hate card, it is certainly awkward. Like, my opponent will have a leg up in the mirror in that capacity. Okay, I lost the Thought Seize rather than the Profane Tutor. My opponent will have an end of turn in Tomb. I'll just crash in for what damage I can. And I'll go to 17, and then I will suspend this tutor. It is probably not going to be fast enough this game. Like, I could be wrong. My opponent could just whiff on draws, but I don't like how this is looking for me. So this is going to be the Entomb, presumably for Archon of Cruelty. Yep. And very notably, the fact that this wasn't an instant or sorcery that I cast is a huge deal here. Yeah, and I'm just going to be dead to that now. Yeah, so like, this not protecting me against the Edict meant that I couldn't top deck the out this turn. And, you know, in theory, if I was able to get a Chain of Smog this turn as my draw, that would have been relevant. 
Now, wouldn't it have? Wouldn't it have? I will concede there. Um, that's very unfortunate. GG's. Okay, final round. I'm on the draw, but I have turned one Dark Ritual into Animate Dead, probably for Grizzlebrand. This is going to be a keep. We're hoping to not be facing down like Chalice of the Void here. Great Wraith. Or maybe Death Shadow. I suppose we will find out. Uh, I have the ability to cast this Grief here while still going Dark Ritual in Tomb Animate Dead, so I believe I will do so. I'll go ahead and play my Badlands here and cast a Grief. And we're done. Okay. That's a weird point to concede. It's turn one and I haven't showed an ability to put a creature into play. Is my opponent doing something so important that they have to hide that information? Okay. Um, I'm going to board into this package for game two. It, my opponent might be super cold to reanimator. Um, and it might just be correct to stay on this, but like... Given zero information, I'm just going to board onto, into something different in game two, confuse my opponent, and then we'll reevaluate what I want to do for game three. Okay, I don't think I am excited about this hand here. Um, I can, like, unmask, pitch an entomb, and not really do anything afterwards. I think I'm just going to ship this. This hand is also not exciting. It's disruptive, but doesn't innately have any of my pieces, doesn't have a second mana. I think I'm going to go to five here. I like this hand quite a bit. Pitch two of these cards. I'm not interested in Entomb. And I probably pitch one of these Griefs and keep both of my theoretical combo pieces. No immediate ley line. Okay. You may thought seize me. I've lost the Wish Claw. Not overly surprising here. Profane Tutor is a great pickup. I am not willing to pitch either one of my cards to grief as of right now. The plan next turn is suspend Profane Tutor. Profane Tutor gets Witherbloom Apprentice. Uh, sure. What got pitched there? Another grief. Sure. So I've lost my tutor. And we're just chilling. Opponent's on two cards. Let's Go take a peek and see what's going on over there. My opponent could have Wasteland effects. I think I'm okay just picking up a basic Swamp until I have some idea of what deck they're playing. Ooh. Alright, the Blood Crypt more or less confirms that this is Death Shadow, which was already very much the suspicion. Okay. Untapped Blood Crypt. I don't think I need to take that card all that badly. I think I will kind of chill. I lost a lot of steam by losing my first two tutors, but my opponent has no threat as of right now. Ooh, reanimate a grief. Sure. Taking my chain of smog. I've now lost three combo pieces cumulatively, and I'm just not quite getting to where I want to be. I'm not gonna cast these griefs right now. I would like to get to the point where I can just hard cast them. If I can play two of these, I will just outclock my opponent if they don't draw another threat. But we could just die like this. Faithless looting. I am unexcited by this card, but I don't necessarily feel like my current cards are particularly good. And my fetching basic swamp may come back to bite me. I draw a Witherbloom Apprentice, uh, which I did not. I'm going to get rid of Thoughtseize and Unmask here. And then next turn I'm going to play a Dark Ritual into a Grief of my own. Alright. I go down to 10 with this hit. I'm not exactly healthy anymore. Let's see what we can do. Let's cast a Grief. Reanimate and a Pyroblast. Pyroblast was a swing and a miss on their end. I will take your reanimate. And all these opposing reanimates definitely makes my life awkward for like deciding whether or not I want to switch back to the reanimation plan for the next game. Ugh, Thoughtseize is a rough draw. Needed to really cast this grief here. Opponent's at nine. 
I can flash back this looting. Sort of Thoughtseize, Delta. I will play this land. Fracking it literally takes a turn off the clock, though. So that's not super appealing. I'll do it if I have to. Ooh, that's another problem card for wanting to switch back to the reanimation plan. It also just means I'm dead next turn. Oh, uh, actually, that's not true, right? I just have to play grief and block their grief. No, but in order to do that, I have to fetch going to three, and then this kills me anyway. I can play Witherbloom Apprentice and block this to stay alive, but then I'm at one. This fetch doesn't work. I don't have any one card that can get me both cards that I need. Oh, Faithless Looting, I can't get both cards that I need. Yeah, all right. I will concede there. And now this is tough because my opponent has these like Dalthy Voidwalkers and these opposing reanimates that make wanting to play reanimator tough, but it doesn't feel like the Witherbloom Apprentice plan is objectively strong enough to fight through the hate that my opponent is playing. So, tough spot. I don't think I'm going to beat my opponent on this plan. I think this is just too slow and they have too much disruption. I think on the play here, I'm going to hope that Reanimator does Reanimator stuff and try to steal my game that way. That's Witch out, Chain of Smog, Wishclaw Talisman, Witherbloom, Apprentice out, and three Profane Tutors out. I would like to play first. This hand casts Grief, pitches, unmask, plays Bayou, reanimates Grief, takes a second card, I would like to go harder than that on the play. If one of these was a red land, I would keep this hand, but neither is. Uh, boy, that's awkward. This is end of turn, in tomb, into turn two, exhum. Probably keep Put the Archon back in the deck, as that would be a disaster for my opponent to take to get rid of whatever creature that I end up selecting. Let's go pedal, flats, pass. And hope that things work out. I don't get the luxury of a discard spell to clear the way this time. Pitched a Death Shadow. I don't think I need to respond to this here. Because I might entomb for the wrong thing in some timelines if I react too early. So for example, if my opponent takes Grizzlebrand and then just has a natural reanimate. Okay. You're gonna like undying evil me or something? Undying malice. Sure. So now this dies, returned with a plus one plus one counter. My opponent gets to take another one of my cards. They're taking an entomb. I am gonna go ahead and fetch here. I'll pick up Badlands. And let's see if this entomb resolves. It does. I'm interested in Archon of Cruelty. Whatever I put in the graveyard, if my opponent has a reanimate, it is a disaster and I basically can't win. I think I'm going to put an Archon in graveyard, specifically because I have a Grizzlebrand in hand, and I don't want to put a Grizzlebrand in there and then have it be, like, surgicaled. Let's unmask my opponent. Take the Douthy Voidwalker, as it is a clock. And we're currently trying to beat a 4-3 Grief. I have a lot of top decks like, I have 12 top decks that get this Archon of Cruelty out of the graveyard. Sure. Another Douthy Voidwalker off the top is super annoying, because I was just trying to buy time to just get to my things that beat this. Thank you, Unmask. Very cool. I only get, like, one more turn here before I'm just dead to Shadow. That's very annoying. All right. Sure, sure, sure. All right. For all the known cards. I eat seven damage here. Um, yeah, I draw two cards. I discard two cards. They go straight to graveyard. This doesn't work. That's very frustrating. Yep, sure, that's fine. One's at 11 there. Playing a giant death shadow. Yeah. I take seven, go to one. Reanimate. I will cast that. I will absolutely cast that. Uh, and I'm dead. And that's a 2-3 league, technically. 
So that was a 2-3, but that was a 2-3 where one of our opponents conceded the match on turn one, like, I think before any plays were actually taken, or maybe I took one play. So we can't put a lot of stock into any results that we're looking at here. Um, but as far as overall thoughts on the deck list go, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of this transformational sideboard. I felt like in some of these rounds, the Chain of Smog backup plan, while it was dodging hate, it was more color intensive and slower than the primary plan. And I think this is just going to be worse than, you know, dumping a rotting Regisaur or equivalent into play that just domes your opponent and gets them dead in three turns. Um, as we saw when we were facing down Discard, if a hole gets punched in our opening hand when we are on the sideboard plan of the Chain of Smog combo, it drastically slows us down. And in the times where we don't sideboard into that plan or we feel like that plan is wrong, I basically have no ability to sideboard. Like, I could play a reanimator deck that plays Profane Tutor, but on 14 lands like we have here, like, Profane Tutor is slow and not always guaranteed to be easily castable. So I think this one is a thumbs down from me. I conceptually like the idea... But after kind of feeling this out in practice, I don't think this is something that's strongly worth pursuing. It's interesting. It's a good idea. But with the combination of it being slower than the primary plan and more mana intensive, again, while on 14 lands here, I, I just don't know if this is quite right. If you just play some singular card that can snowball the game on its own, you know, that is good. A one-time burst of an expensive card is fine. Like, it's probably easier to cast one Rotting Regisaur than it is one Witherbloom Apprentice followed by one Chain of Smog in a lot of cases. So, even if we mess with this board a little bit, and we try some different tutors or something like that, like Worldly Tutor was in the first draft that I had, I, I don't think this is going to end up being more powerful than other things that we've tried in the past. That was a weird league. I hope it was still enjoyable. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. If you didn't, like, maybe click the like button anyway and take pity on me. All right, folks, I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya!